Welcome to a brief tutorial on how to identify natural and processed plant matter by polarized light microscopy. But first let's get the disclaimer out of the way. Make sure you follow all recommended safety precautions and familiarize yourself with the material safety data sheets when handling chemicals. Don't forget to follow all manufacturer safety precautions when using tools or equipment. Let's start with cotton, one of the most processed plant materials in the world. Processed cotton differs from natural cotton in that it tends to retain damage incurred during manufacture such as surface pitting from peroxides, sulfides, and chlorides, or it takes on deformations in the form of crimping and striations among other things. By comparison, natural cotton fiber does not display the same characteristics, but rather the natural twist of the fiber or internal structures. Now here I'm going to introduce you to Herzberg stain, which is one of several reagents used in the paper and textile industries to help identify plant fiber and whether or not they've been processed. The key thing here to remember is that the fibers that have been processed will lose lignin, which tends to stain yellow. Also chemicals used during the pulping process can be detected by a red, blue, or purplish fiber color. Let's start with a simple paper towel. These types of paper products are made from whatever is available, including bark, sapwood, heartwood, and pith. What was once a tree is mechanically reduced to a pulp, resulting in coarse, non-uniform, torn and frayed fibers. The process typically includes a quick chemical treatment, such as hydrogen peroxide, which strips some of the lignin from the product. However, a great deal is left behind. When introduced to Herzberg stain, the fibers that have little to no lignin pick up a stain, typically red to blue. The lignin-containing fibers are stained yellow. As far as natural fibers go that you would find in any normal dust samples, cotton is really the one which can be a little bit more pesky. Natural cotton also has a tendency to stain a slight pink color. This is just one of the ways to determine that you have a cotton fiber. However, by comparing processed cotton to natural cotton, you can see that the natural cotton still retains a lot of the yellow coloration from the lignin content. However, if you take a look at milkweed under Herzberg, you see that it's simply staining yellow. There is no additional coloration. This is very common amongst a lot of the natural plant materials. So when it comes to cotton, you need to take note of the deformations that form from the processing of the fiber. And keep in mind that cotton will stain a dull reddish yellow color in its natural state. Unlike natural plant matter, that won't stain as easily. This includes a lot of organic material, such as mold spores. Just to reiterate, natural plant matter under Herzberg will stain a yellow color because of the lignin content. And it's not uncommon to have a little bit of pink show up as well. Now let's move on to paper. Paper can undergo a wide range of preparations from basic mechanical to multiple chemical processes including hydroxides, hypochlorates, and sulfonation, often being run through the same process multiple times. To start, one of the most basic paper products, cardboard, as used in cardboard boxes. Now cardboard consists of a wide range of fiber from softwoods to bark from trees to recycled paper products pretty much whatever is available and inexpensive to the manufacturer. The material is mechanically and often chemically pulped, but typically lacks any bleaching process. As such, the fibers vary widely in diameter, length, and texture, and often have fine filaments or hair still attached. Since there's a lack of bleach, the fibers also retain a tan to brown color and stain deep yellow with some pink to red by Herzberg reagent. Another coarse paper product is paper towels, which often include bleaching in the processing, which results in a more uniform reddish color and less yellow from the lignin. In addition, the fibers typically contain less filaments than cardboard and appear more uniform and clean. Tissues are similar to paper towels, though they commonly display even less lignin, and depending on the brand, the fibers can appear more uniform and clean. Kim wipes are a good example of this. By comparison, cellulose used to make manila envelopes is more heavily processed than paper towels. They are also subjected to bleaching in order to obtain a uniform color. This product, which can be considered on the other side of the coarse paper spectrum, begins to exhibit dark reddish to blue color by Herzberg. Now a good example of fine paper products is something like printer paper. This product undergoes a full range of processes, often including thermomechanical pulping, multiple bleaching steps to strip everything from the cellulose. Now while appearing much the same as coarse paper fiber, the lignin is removed, resulting in a lack of yellow coloration by Herzberg. In addition, 
the fiber exhibits a deep red to reddish blue color. An easy way to see the stain color is by using a reflected light microscope with a dark field or a stereo microscope. Place a white sheet of paper under the sample and set the incoming light near the side so it comes in at an oblique angle. Here's the paper samples once more, but now it's easier to see the progression of the Herzberg stain from the coarse cardboard through to high quality printer paper. If you're interested, here are two documents that go farther into fiber analysis with Herzberg as well as other stains in order to identify the various plant fibers used in the paper industry. Of course, it never hurts to create your own library, so get out there, collect plant matter, collect different types of paper, and check them out for yourself. So here we come to the end of our little tutorial. So I'll leave you with a little cheat sheet. It's hardly comprehensive, but it does cover the majority of the materials that you're typically going to find in dust samples. Thanks for watching.